Okay, welcome everybody. It is fabulous to be with you tonight. It's really exciting. There are people with us from all different parts of the world. I'm in Johannesburg in South Africa. It's uh, summer here. It's really warm. There's a storm building up outside, so maybe there'll be some rain. Um, it's nighttime here. People are in all sorts of different time zones. But welcome and thank you for coming to share with me. Um, I love these forums. We used to do them quite regularly and haven't for a while. So um, it's very, very cool to, to be with you all. And it's a wonderful space for us to talk, to ask questions, to learn, to share and to connect. Um, and we can go anywhere tonight that you would like with this discussion. Um, it's for all of us. So let's take a moment to drop into our body. So close your eyes if you feel comfy to do that. You're all alone. And take a breath. Take a deep breath in. And breathe out. And again, take a breath in. And breathe out. And take a deep, deep breath in. And slowly, slowly, slowly breathe out. And become aware of your body, become aware of your breath, of your breath moving in and out of your body. Become aware of your belly and your chest, softly expanding, rising as you breathe in. And gently relaxing, releasing as you breathe out. And with each breath, allow yourself to relax. Allow your body to soften. Every part of your body to just soften. With each breath, to soften into yourself, to relax and to drop into yourself. And now take a deeper breath in and out, and a deep breath in, and a sigh. As you breathe out and a deep, deep breath in. <sighs> and slowly open your eyes and smile. It's happy time. We're here together. That's amazing. You know, I'm a real, uh, I'm a bit of a Luddite in some ways. I love technology. There's a lot of it I don't understand. There's a lot of it that baffles me and confuses me. And there's lots that I have to learn about it. Um, and I love books. You know, I really love holding a book in my hand. Um, but the amazing thing is how this technology allows us to be together. Um, we're in all these different places. And it's absolutely fantastic that that can happen tonight. So the idea of this is that it's an open forum, which is about questions and answers. It's about discussion. Um, and it's learning and connecting for all of us. So everything is open. You may unmute yourselves and ask a question. You can type it into the chat box and ask a question. You may comment on something any way that you would like this to be. Um, I can share some of the stuff that I've been thinking and talking about lately, um, whatever it is that you would like. So does somebody want to maybe start with a question? Something that you're curious about, something that you'd like to know about? Um, 
It was a great movie a long, long time ago made by Woody Allen. It was called Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Sex But Never Asked. And this is your opportunity. So, you know, when nobody asks a question, then we think, okay, so we all know everything and absolutely we're all absolute experts, which is an interesting thing. Like, what does being an expert on sex actually mean? What does that mean? Um, what does that mean? Like, does that mean we know everything? Does that mean we know so much about our bodies, about our partner's bodies? We know about technique, mm. we know about energy, we know about connection, we know about intimacy. Yeah, mm. yeah that's, that's a lot. I know that's a lot with me learning my body, you know, chemistry uh -huh. of my own, the, the chemical uh and the chemistry of my own particular body amazes me sometimes uh you know the feelings that i have and the emotions that i have when it comes to uh uh connecting with somebody physically uh i don't know it's it just something particularly uh uh amazes me uh like after like uh after i have uh uh, after I have a, a, an orgasm uh, with uh, my better half or whatever you call it, uh, it seems like that night, most of the time it's in the evening, and it seems like that next morning I'm more aroused than I was when I was actually going through the, uh, 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 the procedure, you know, going through having uh, intercourse the next morning I'm more aroused than anything you know I'm more sensitive you know my body and everything like that and uh, so I find myself seeking pleasure uh, that next that next morning so I was wondering I said well, why, why why is that you know mm, that's beautiful um, because so what what's happening when when we're connected with someone? What's happening when we have when we're having pleasure is that our body's releasing firstly all of these pleasure chemicals. So it's releasing a whole lot of hormones that are about pleasure. And the more of these that we have, the more we firstly want them, and secondly, the more that they actually attract more pleasure. So the more pleasure we have, the more pleasure it is that we actually attract and allow. And when we're really deeply connected so the power of this is actually from intimacy more than than the sex itself because the real power is in the intimacy and the connection not so much the sex and the more connected we are the more intimate we are the more energy flows and the more we want the connection and that's really really beautiful that when that builds up and there's more of it that we want more of it does that make sense And then, the, and then the connection just becomes deeper and deeper and it kind of keeps mm. expanding and it keeps expanding. I know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's so beautiful because, right. you know, the pleasure is expanding rather than contracting. And for so many people, sex is this contractive experience. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's very much about an orgasm. And especially for men, once that orgasms happen, then that's it, we're done. And, you know, I always make a mm -hmm. joke for men, it should be called going, not coming, because after that, I just <laughs> right. fall asleep. Um, right. mm -hmm. But when we get that it's about energy and that it's about connection, then it keeps moving, it keeps flowing. And uh, actually, I actually wrote a piece that I posted earlier this week. It's on my Facebook page. You can look at it. And it's called When Does Sex End? And the idea is that for most of us, sex is this very specific act that mm -hmm. has, you know, like a beginning and a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, like a movie. It has a story and it builds up to a climax and then wow. ends. That's happily, it. unhappily, like if it's a Tarantino movie, everybody dies at the end or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, right. But... When we understand that it's about energy and about connection, it's an energy that 
keeps moving, that keeps flowing. So it's like mm. a fire that never really goes out. So we're not mm. starting the whole fire from the very beginning. Like right. it just goes low. And then we just kind of blow on these coals or we add a few twigs, we add a few <laughs> sticks, right. and all of a sudden the fire's there again. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot to do with um, being sexual rather than doing sex. Doing sex, right. And that's what a right. lot of us do. We do sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts, it ends, and we've done it. Okay, so when we, right. Yeah, when we are sexual, then it's this energy that's there all the time. And mm -hmm. then it starts to become, we connect so much more to life because so much of our sexuality is our vitality. It's our creativity. Mm -hmm. So we start to become more aware of, of nature. You know, we're more sensitive. Um, we're more aware of what's happening around us. And that becomes so beautiful. And I talk quite a lot about making love with life. And that's what yeah. it is. It's this mm. appreciation of like the wind on your skin, um, of of you know what we're drinking. I've got some tea here. <laughs> and to really savor, savor that. Right. It becomes more that's about that. sensuality than just about sex. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yeah. true. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things, there's an interesting question, and I'll look at it now. But, um, you know, I talk a lot about how sensuality is a path of, of awareness. And we often connect sensuality to sex. And we kind of say that sensuality is the foreplay of sex. And of course it is. But sensuality is one of the ways that we experience life and the world and each other. The fact that we can see each other, that we can hear each other, that's using our senses. The tea that I have here that I can taste, I can feel the chair underneath me, um, I can hear the wind outside, and occasionally there's this little gust of, of air coming into the room, and it's really beautiful. So the more sensually aware we become, the more we become aware of our own bodies, the more we become aware of feelings. And there's a whole range of, of sensual micro practices that I teach. So the micro practices are actually short practices. Um, so my favorite one, I'm a really big coffee drinker and coffee is really important for me, is think about the first coffee in the morning and, um, you know, really hold the cup in your, in your hands and feel the warmth and the weight of the cup and really inhale the smell of the of the coffee and for the first sip the first taste be really present with the coffee and then you drink the coffee think about the the first mouthful of a meal to really taste that um, when you open the door or the windows in the morning to feel the air whether it's hot or cold or rainy or snowy it doesn't matter just the awareness of that um, even when you get dressed to feel the clothes on your on your body. Um, and it brings us into a deeper awareness of our sensuality. Okay. So there's an interesting question here which says, how does the dynamics change in a very intimate relationship? Where we have respected not to touch, but sexual tension is building, healthy but hot, hot. Um, so I guess I'd ask with that, where does that go? It is, it's a beautiful thing, and it's really interesting. But where does it go? So if you're building all of the sexual tension, then what are you actually doing with it? Um, and why is it healthy? What, like what makes that healthy as opposed to anything else? It's a different experience. There's no question of that. Um, and it's very interesting to be in sexual energy and not always be having sex. So there can be this incredibly beautiful and incredibly powerful buildup of energy between us. And that can be really, really exciting. 
where are we going with it? What's the intention? What's the, the purpose of that? Is it, you know, we're just building the energy and we're being in the space, but where are we going with it? What are we doing with it? Um, you know, if we use this energy in the body, are we going to sublimate it? Are we going to use it for creativity? Are we going to use it for meditation? Are we going to use it to be more intimate with each other in an amazing dance um, of looking into each other's eyes and exchanging that energy? Can we use it for something like energy sex, which actually has no touch in it, where we're using our eyes to penetrate and to receive? where the energy of our hearts can be open to penetrate. Um, okay, so healthy is not just the lust, but trying to build the relationship. Absolutely. And I'd also say in this, don't discount the sex, because that's just one path of sexuality. So don't discount it and... Um, because sex can add enormously to your relationship. The intimacy of that connection can really expand that. And a big part of that is, is changing the way that we have sex. So if we're in this very goal-oriented sexual space, um, then that's just about the orgasm. And that's very much the goal. So we're concerned with the end of sex. Very often that becomes... Um, a little bit of a performance in a way because one person thinks they have to make the other person come so there's a performance there's pressure there's all kinds of things in that but what happens if it was about actually being in that sexual energy and allowing that energy to move through the body allowing that energy to fill us and at some point actually stopping in that and really breathing really feeling that and not ending that, not always taking that to orgasm, but having that delicious energy and that delicious feeling inside, and then allowing that to be there. Um, I'm not sure who asked that question, but I hope that answers it. It gives you something. If you want more, please say so. Is that is that anything to do? Uh, does that could could you connect that with? Uh, I guess that wouldn't be, or connected with uh, edging. Would it? Or could you associate that with edging in any way? Um, it can or, be. But it's more so edging. My understanding of it is this: edging edging is much more of a physical experience than anything else. When we add breathing, when we add moving energy through the body. So one of the practices that I teach, for example, is, is called expanded orgasm. And this is about building sexual energy and moving the energy through the body with breath. So it's not just about getting close to orgasm and stopping, because that's essentially what edging is. And that's very physical. But when we add breath to that, when we understand that it's a, an energy experience, and we're actually filling the body with all of the sexual energy, that becomes a very different experience to just um, the physical idea of, of edging. And edging on its own can be really exciting, but it's much more of a physical experience more than a, a deeper energy experience. So the, the power of that is very much in in learning to breathe and learning to relax the body because sex for most of us and edging becomes a part of this is it's kind of a contractive experience. So as you get close to that orgasm, everything in the body gets tight. Your muscles get tight, your breathing gets quick. And then if you have the orgasm, you have this big explosion and you scream or shout, or if you're the quiet type, you just go, oh, that was nice. And that's all. But if we build the sexual energy and we move that through the body, that becomes a very different kind of experience. 
So it's quite a shift from the physical into the idea of energy. How important is the context of the bedroom to add to the romance or intimacy, or is it all in the soul? Um, so firstly, the bedroom can be absolutely anywhere and anything. Um, and if we limit it just to the bedroom, then, you know, we limit the experience. Um, and it's all of these things. It's not ever just one, and it's not ever just one thing. Um, because intimacy happens on so many levels. And one of the most important things that I have come to understand is the power of connection. So often we connect with somebody when we want sex. We connect with somebody in some very specific ways um, in that way. The more that we can spend time consciously connecting, you know, doing a whole lot of connecting practices, eye gazing, uh, breathing, sometimes words are a big way to connect, movement, dance, touch, so many different practices. The more we connect, the deeper the connection between us is, the deeper the intimacy between us is, and the more sexual energy is flowing. To connect in different ways with awareness comes more from the heart. And the more that we're in that heart space, the more the soul is present in that. And sometimes to connect more physically becomes really important. So it's, I think, exploring and talking about and asking what it is that we need or how we need to connect today which means I might need a talk today and tomorrow I really want to hold you and I want to be held. So it's not just one thing and it's not just one way. Um, it's so many different things and the connection can happen in so many different ways. And if it's always kind of in the bedroom or it's always in that context, then it becomes quite limited because it becomes patterned. And, you know, the cornerstone of so much of what I do is about the patterns that we live with. And the patterns become uh, subconscious, and then that's what we do. It works, or we think it works. It's all that we know. So we just follow the pattern. But can we keep that energy moving in these different ways that we, that we share? We practice Tantra with my partner and find that the less we move while lovemaking, the more orgasmic we feel because we connect in a more aware way. Absolutely, you know, and um, again, I mean, this is something that I've, I've written about, but it's a really, it's a really powerful thing that often. Well, that's deep. Yes, and often as soon as we so if you think about it from a sexual perspective, as soon as we're inside somebody, we start to move. It's like our hips don't even have a, a choice. It's like they just start moving, you know, and that's so much a pattern and so much the conditioning. But when we understand that it's so much more about the energy, when we become still, we actually feel. So stillness brings us inside of ourselves. And that's really important. So most of us have what we call friction sex. So in essence, friction sex is that I'm inside someone and I'm just moving and I'm building up enough friction to get to the point of hopefully both of us having an orgasm. But it's very much about the friction and it's the kind of rubbing on something. You know, like if I'm rubbing my partner's clit, then I'm rubbing and I'm rubbing harder and faster because we want to get to that orgasm. It's the idea of the friction. As soon as we get out of that idea of friction and we start getting into presence, we start to actually become aware of sensation rather than just friction. And that's where so much starts to change. And to explore sensation is firstly limitless and often incredibly and beautifully and deliciously subtle. So here's wow. a wonderful example of this. So everybody hold one hand up. And then with your other hand, firstly, stroke quite quickly. 
So when you stroke quite quickly, you actually don't feel a whole lot. So now stroke really slowly. Oh, more sensual. Absolutely. And you see how much more you actually feel. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, now do this a couple more times. And then stop, but keep your awareness on your hand, on the hand you're touching. And feel how you can still feel that, how the sensation is changing. Now it's maybe moving a little bit more into your into your arm, into your body, but it's still there. I can still feel that. I can still feel it. So when we slow down, we start to actually be able to feel. Mm -hmm. When we slow down, we actually start to be more present. And that's really, really important because the friction stuff is not about presence. It's mm. about getting to that point of orgasm. And I'm going to mm. say this. It's really important. There is nothing wrong with orgasms. Orgasms are fabulous. They do wonderful things for us. And we can have so many different kinds of orgasms. How many different kinds of orgasm can a woman have, by the way? Anybody know? Six. Six. If you say six, can you name them? I'm just curious. Uh, no, I was just guessing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any advance on six? It's like a like um, in an auction, going once, going twice. Okay, so depending on, on how you count them, anywhere between maybe 10 and 15, 16 different kinds of orgasms. Wow. And men can also have quite a range of, of orgasmic experiences. And most times we experience orgasm as this kind of contractive, quite short-lived experience. So orgasms can do so many different things and be so many different things. And that's really, right. really cool and really important. But yeah. what is important and what is so interesting in this, and I've totally lost the track of what I was saying, but it was about the fact that when we're focusing on, on, on the idea of this friction sex and the idea of orgasm, our attention is on the orgasm because that's the point we want to get to, which means our attention is over there it's not what I'm feeling now. So I'm not really feeling the sensations, the energy that I'm experiencing in, in present time. Right. Because right. I'm doing whatever I have to do to get to there. To get there. Right. Yeah. So I'm in whatever Thanks. thoughts, whatever fantasies, mm -hmm. whatever I need to get right. to the orgasm. Mm -hmm. that's when I slow it. down and when I stop, mm -hmm. that's when I actually right. start right. to feel what's right. happening right. in the body right. now. I'm sure hitting it on the point. And that's where, from that point of feeling, from that mm -hmm. sensation, the energy can actually move through the whole body. Uh, right. What becomes really important in that as well is that as well as slowing down, it becomes so important to relax. Relax, right. And the deeper that we breathe, the mm -hmm. more we can relax. And when the body is relaxed, the energy, the sensation, the feelings can move through the body. Mm -hmm. And then a breath helps to move that through the body. Yeah, that's true. It's so true. And that's where so much starts to change. Mm -hmm. So the three things that are really important in that, stop, breathe, relax. And then when you're moving and you think you're moving slower, or moving slowly, go even slower, and then go even slower. And yeah. that's where we start to feel. Yeah, I know that uh, it happened to me one time where uh, she told uh, uh, one of my friends, she told, she told me, don't move, you know, once I had entered it, it, in her. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, don't move. So she wouldn't let me move, you know. And uh, I was afraid when she told me not to move that I was perhaps was going to lose my erection because I wasn't moving. But it got greater once I relaxed. That's it. And, and we stayed think, there. Like, mm -hmm. You know, as men, we've been very conditioned to this power of contraction. 
And the real power actually is in relaxation. Relaxation, right. Not in the contraction. Not in the contraction, right. And in that, if you need to move a little bit, you know, to keep your erection, yeah. then you right. do that. Right, right, right. But it's not going into that friction thing. It's like yeah, not going into friction. Thing. Right. Yeah, maybe I just need a little bit of sensation. Right, 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 right. And that becomes very, very different. Because it seems like the erection, the uh, the uh, orgasm. That's that's the end of the love, uh, the sexual experience. That's the end of it. That's not the. Uh, totality of it you know it, the love making like you say it comes from uh relaxation enjoying the other person's body relaxing mm -hmm. breathing you know uh maybe a touch a feel a word a whisper you know that's what love making is that's what se sexual intercourse is i mean it seems like to me you get more pleasure from that than you do the you know, do the actual orgasm yeah well if you think about that term love making it's really interesting because it has so much in it simply because of, of what it says that if we're going to do something that makes love that actually becomes quite different mm -hmm. to having sex because having sex is is a lot about this goal-oriented experience mm -hmm. making love is very different so right the kind of sex that we have is often determined by what it is that we want from our sexual experience. And if we start thinking about that, then we start thinking, well, what am I doing that's actually going to allow me to have that experience? So there's a very interesting practice in this, which is asking the question of why you have sex. And if you think about it, there are so many different reasons why we have sex. But if, if one of the reasons that I'm having sex, for example, is that I want to feel connected to you, then what are we going to do that's going to foster that feeling of connection? Because if it's just this friction sex, there isn't going to be a lot of connection in that. No. And if our eyes are closed or the lights are off or we're in some fantasy in our head about you know, whatever we were seeing on the internet today, then there's not a lot of connection. So if one of the reasons that I'm having sex is about the connection, then it becomes really important to, um, to look into each other's eyes. And that's, that changes what we do sexually enormously, just looking into your partner's eyes, because most of us have sex with our eyes closed. Or with the lights off or something. Yeah. So as soon as we're there with each other, and it's very vulnerable looking into each other's eyes during lovemaking, it's very, very intimate and very vulnerable having an orgasm looking into someone's eyes. But that's the real intimacy. That's where we really see each other. That's where we really feel each other. That's where we right. deeply connect. If anybody like uh I mean I know it's a lot of us all, but just a question if uh I think it happened to me one time before, but have anybody like ha ha had a orgasm without uh uh with very limited touch or or no touch at all? Absolutely. Um mm -hmm. firstly there's something called an energy orgasm where you can have an orgasm just moving energy through your body. And when it's much more about intimacy and emotion, when it's much more about connection, then sometimes the touch actually becomes quite secondary in that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, absolutely. Okay. Very good, very interesting, wow. One of the things that I love about these experiences when we come together is, um, you know, we never know what's going to to be shared in these conversations. And I absolutely, absolutely love where we go. So what else is there for us tonight?
What do we want to know? I want to sing in the meantime. You might it's... have to go along like they did in, in school and, and ask individual questions. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> if I sing, you're all going to run away. So I'm not going to sing while we're waiting. Hmm. Joanne looked like she kind of has something to say in a way. She was supposed to stuff. Okay, well, anybody is the floor is open for all of us. I mean, Joma, not Joanne. I mean, Joma Parker. Okay. Well, if anybody's ready, they will ask a question. Hi, John T. Rowley here. Hello, Rowley. How you doing? I'm good. Um, I wonder if you could just expand a little on that um, concept where you said, forget about orgasm. Can you expand a little on that? Yeah, absolutely. It's really important. Um, so the first thing is that, that we live and we work in terms of, of patterns. Mm -hmm. And what's happened is every time that we've had sex from the time we started touching ourselves, we've had an orgasm. So it's become very much a, a pattern in terms of the body and in terms of the mind. It also becomes the, the criterion by which we judge an experience because that's what made it a successful sexual experience is that I had an orgasm. So it becomes very much a pattern. The body gets patterned just as much as, as the mind. When we start to explore sexuality, we understand that orgasm firstly is a choice. And secondly, orgasm is just one sexual experience. And in the range of sexual possibilities, it is again, just one experience. When we learn that sex is more about energy, that's when the idea of orgasm starts to change because it's much more about the energy of sexuality, not just the orgasm. Then if we understand that our sexual cycles can be, between men and women, can be very, very similar. That very often for women, when a man has had an orgasm and, and he's done, that's when a lot of women are just starting to really um, feel their sexual energy. I mean, there was a, a figure that I came across a little while ago that said the average sexual experience today lasts about five minutes. And if you think that for a woman to get to deeper and higher states of arousal needs a minimum of 35, 40 minutes plus of stimulation, then what happens with... Um, you know what happens when when we get um what happens with uh, after this five minutes so when a man can get out of the idea of orgasm we start to get into pleasure we start to get into sensation we start to get into feeling then we start to see so in this space i can actually build sexual energy in an amazing way and the freedom, the liberation of this comes from the fact that I actually can choose how I'd like the experience to be and how I'd like it to end instead of it just happening in one way. And the one way for most of us is the orgasm, which again just becomes the pattern. And to emphasize and, and understand that orgasms are fabulous, but that's not all that there is. You know, if you think about if you have a plate of, of French fries, how many different things you could put on your fries? You could have tomato sauce, you could have ketchup, you could have mayonnaise, you could have mustard, you could have chutney, you could have so many different things. So can our sexual experiences be different? 
And if we understand that it may be more about intimacy, then maybe it's not about that orgasm. Maybe it's about that really deep connection and having that sexual energy there that's really delicious and that's filling our bodies. That becomes very different. Because for a man, the orgasm ends the experience. So if you can build that energy up in your body and you can keep it in you, you have that energy to use for vitality, for health, for creativity, for meditation, um, in so many different ways. So it starts to offer us the idea that our sexuality and sexual energy can actually be a portal and a way into so many other things than just the sex and just the orgasm. And then understanding that as a man, you can have different kinds of orgasms. For example, you can have what's called a melting orgasm, which is really slow, really soft, and it's much more of internal feeling rather than just the explosive contractive orgasm. Does that answer the question, Roby? Does that give you stuff? Does that show on the it, outside? It does. But it, it, it's a flow huge, it's, it's, it show on the outside? Yeah, it's a huge mind shift for men, but it's the mind shift that brings incredible freedom and opens the door to amazing sexual exploration and possibility. Because then we start to feel, because when we're focusing on the orgasm, we're actually not feeling what we're feeling now, because all of my awareness is in getting there. And that goes back to that idea of friction, because that's where I want to go. But if I can feel everything, then it's worlds that open. Yeah, it, it answers the question, but it also then poses a whole a lot of other ones, but maybe those are for another time, um, because yeah, I guess well, those things uh, take practice. Yeah, and that's the key. You know, think about it like this. We spend time learning what we do in life. So how do we learn as humans? Does anybody know? Because we learn one way only as humans. Any idea how we learn? Repetition. That's it. That's how we learn. So the only way that we learn something new is by practicing it. And the more that we practice it, the more we learn it. Um, and the more we start to see the, the benefits of it. You know, if you start exercising, if you start going to yoga or whatever it is that you're going to do, if you go once, not a whole lot happens. But if you do that over time, you start to understand it more. You start to see the benefits of it. Something happens, something changes inside of you. So it's only through practice that we change our sexual patterning, that we change our mental patterning around sex, that we change our emotional patterning. And that's where the learning becomes so important and where the practice becomes so important. And then it's this endless lifelong journey. You know, I've been firstly working in, in the field of conscious sexuality for over 20, 25 years, and I'm still learning more. But a lot of these things come from practice and the learning and what a beautiful thing to practice. I'm looking forward to it. Fabulous. Thank you, Jonty. Thank you. Any suggestion for someone new to BDSM and is interested in DDLG, especially for trying into the little space alone? Somebody's going to have to tell me what DDLG is. Because um, that'll be really helpful. And then I... I'm sure I'll be able to answer your question. Change some stuff on Zoom here, which is making it quite interesting. Oh, Daddy Dom and Little Girl Play. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. Um, age play, I tend to be playful, but rough with props like cuffs and rope. However, opening this energy as a guy feels strange to open up to an older woman. The 
dominance dynamics feels weird. So if we understand that in that space, the role play of, of whatever it is that we want gives us so much freedom to experience all these different aspects of ourselves. And when we say, okay, so it feels strange to open this to an older woman, very often that's more kind of the story that we have in our mind about something. Um, and that's simply often a mental perception that we have about it. But if we understand that inside of us are all these different aspects of our, of our sexuality that would love to be expressed, then we can kind of put the, the belief that we have aside. And maybe in other parts of the relationship that is important and that is a definite element of the relationship. But when I can go into that role play space, I can actually drop all of that and I can allow the different parts of me to be there and to be expressed. Um, does that help? And sometimes the strange might be that it's new. Um, and the more I inhabit that role and the more I explore that role and the more I'm in that role, the easier it will become. Because if you're going to do that, you really need to put your energy into that. You really need to be that dominant masculine presence who's there and holding that space for that little girl. So it needs to come from some very deep places inside. And the more that you can do that, the, the more comfortable you'll feel in it. The more comfortable you feel in it, the easier it will be to be in that and to explore it and explore the different elements of it, the, the subtleties and the, the things that it brings. And sometimes things feel weird because we believe that they're weird or they're new, they're different. Um, and again, spending some time like you know, with what we've just been talking about. So as a man, if you decide that you're going to have a sexual experience and you are not going to have an orgasm, it's going to feel weird because for 30, 40 odd years that you've been having sex with yourself, with somebody else, you've had an orgasm. All of a sudden you don't. And it's like, what the heck's going on? And my body doesn't know what's doing. And my mind doesn't know what's going on. And it's all very confusing. And I don't know if I'm satisfied because I'm frustrated. And what's happening inside of me? <laughs> so take a breath and say, okay, what am I feeling? So what does it feel like to be that daddy dog? What does that feel like? What are the elements of that? What can I bring to that? And I can bring more and more and more over time because I understand it more, I get it more, um, it's comfier within me. And it can be so much fun playing in that realm as well. And we forget that um, sex and sensuality are one of the ways that we as adults play. And as serious as it is, and we've been talking about some, some deep and some serious stuff, um, it's also really important to understand that it's got to be fun. We've got to play. We've got to have fun. You know, I did a workshop on, on the weekend called the Primal Fire, and we had a lot of fun on that. So one of the beautiful practices that we did, everybody had a great time with was stalking your partner. You know, stand on, on opposite sides of the room to each other, put some really cool music on, and slowly you come closer. Slowly coming closer, like you're stalking your prey through the woods. You get a glimpse of them, and all of a sudden they're gone, and coming back, and a little bit, and then eventually I've got you, and now what am I going to do with you once I've got you? That was good. I'm sorry I missed that one. Mm. Well, do it again. If you do, I'll be there. Mm. 
É, Bilas. Stalking was lots of fun. Yes, indeed. Anything else that anybody would like to ask for now? We will do this again in a couple of weeks. I love these evenings, so um, we will go back to doing them quite, quite regularly again. So thank you everybody for sharing with me tonight. I had a really good time. I hope oh, okay. Your thoughts on masturbating to your lover when they are away. Fabulous. Absolutely, of course. Why not? Really enjoy it and love it and share it with them. You know, you can share it. On the phone, you can share it online. You can even send them a message saying, oh, touching myself and thinking about you, I'm feeling you. And it can absolutely be a beautiful way to share and be and be erotic in that. Um, definitely. And you can have a lot of a lot of fun with it. You can even do it mutually while while you know, while you're apart. Um, do it on the phone. You can even do it with an energy connection, it can be really exciting. But absolutely, definitely. And, you know, when you tell somebody that um, that you're thinking about them and you're so turned on, it's such an affirmation. It's so beautiful. Um, and they really feel like, wow, this is amazing. It's intimate. It's, it's exciting. It's arousing. It's beautiful. Very good. So thank you, everybody, for sharing with me. I've had a really good time with you guys. Um, please follow me on, on Facebook. Uh, go to my website, eroslife.co.za. I send out a newsletter every week. You can sign up for, for that. There's a lot of stuff in it. Um, on the website, there's a whole series of, of educational DVDs that you can buy on lots of topics. They're all downloads. Um, there's a lot of content and lots of things. Your thoughts on non-monogamy? This is a big, big question. Um, and I'm actually going to say we're going to leave that one for another time because it's actually a topic on its own because it is. It's a huge, um, it's a huge topic, and there are so many different aspects. And maybe that is a good topic for next time. So let me ask that quickly. Is that something everybody would be interested in talking about or hearing about? Is it interesting? Whether you decide that you're going to be monogamous or non-monogamous, is it an interesting exploration? Is it an interesting topic for people? Yes, yes. I'm going to presume that's a definite yes. Oh, I say yes. <laughs> no, we will do that. Um, but it's a it's a really big topic, and um, we will talk about that. We will talk about that more. So thank you again, everybody. I've had a really, really cool time. i give you all a big hug. Um, I hope you're all huggers because hugging is just fabulous. Um, and I really look forward to sharing more with you soon. So the way I end all of these things is to say that I wish you so much pleasure. Thank you, John T.